Okay, this is Professor Barry Brennan. I'm here to finish up our lecture, excuse me, on persuasive speaking. And we are focusing on fallacies. I'm actually going to name this lecture Fallacies for Public Speaking. And uh, let's get right into it. All right, there we are. So what is a fallacy anyway, right? Do you understand what that means? So fallacy means false, right? Something that it's not true. Fallacy is something that is false and are not true. So logical fallacies are what we think of as false or erroneous reasoning. Like it's, it's usually, um, or oftentimes it's, it's intentionally deceptive. Sometimes it's not. Some people aren't reasoning well, uh, but oftentimes it is intentionally or it's invalid. It's a line of reasoning. It's a way of reasoning. How do we know that? Well, I'm going to introduce you to some named fallacies, but what I'm more interested in for you as a student is to be able to recognize when you hear erroneous reasoning, like what's wrong with that? Like, what are they doing? You know, it's fun to know the names of slippery slope, red herring, you know, bandwagon, getting on the bandwagoning fallacy, you know, it's okay to know that, but it's more important for you to be able to uh, detect when you or someone else is using fallacious reasoning. Let's keep going. All right, this is a great little video on your own time to, it's called the fallacy project that will kind of introduce how fallacies are used, you know, watch it when you, when you have time. So begging the question, I love that when the people say, oh, that's begging the question. Well, what does that mean? It occurs when an argument's premises assume the truth of the conclusion rather than supporting it. So it's like, um, gosh, I can't even think of more right now. In other words, you assume without proof the assertion, the position. So we say, um, Let's say teachers make a lot of money, so Professor Brennan must, um, Professor Ma Brennan is rich. What does that mean, right? That's like, or um, usually used in, in more of a negative way. You know, uh, teachers are, are the biggest jerks on the planet, so Professor Brennan must be a really big jerk. Professor Brennan is a real jerk, right? That's like, it's, it's whatever I said in the beginning is the same thing I said, or um, probably a better one would be uh, uh, teachers are such jerks. Um, teachers always treat, yeah, teachers are such jerks. Teachers always treat students like terribly. I hope my colleagues don't get mad at me for using these examples, but I don't want to use student examples, but that's, so I said the same thing a different way, but I basically said the same thing rather than giving a specific example. That's actually a better of baking the question. So people like try to validate what they said originally, their, their assertion with the same assertion said in a different way. That's baking the question. They didn't give any evidence. Bandwagoning, y'all have heard this one before, an argument that utilizes unsubstantiated general opinion as its basis. So uh, unsubstantiated meaning they haven't backed it up with any evidence, right? So that uses this, we have a general opinion, but it's unsubstantiated, you haven't proven it. They do this in about wolves. Uh, Wolves are, they attack, I just saw something online about that. Wolves attack humans uh, more often than coyotes do. And that's a whole other thing. Like, why would you want to throw, why would you want to throw wolves to the wolves? Why would you want to do that? Why would you want to say anything negative about any kind of wildlife if you're, if you're a proponent of the, the protection of wildlife, number one, doesn't make any sense. But it's unsubstantiated, it's some general opinion that people think about wolves, which is absolutely not true. There's no verifiable um, incidences like wolf attacks on humans is so 
you've there's more attacks of uh, mountain lions on humans than there are ever wolves in, in the history of ever. So that's very unusual. Okay. And people then getting on the bandwagon means people like that's some general opinion. So it must be true. Everybody believes that about that animal or about that person. So it must be true, but no one's proved that it's true. People do that in politics all the time. Let's go back this. Let's go back to remember when um, Barack Obama, former president Obama was accused of not having a birth certificate because one of his parents was from Africa. I'm pretty sure it was from Africa. I want to say Kenya. Yeah, his father's from Kenya. Remember all that? That's And everybody got into this general opinion that he must not really be a citizen of the United States and da 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 It's like, there, it was completely unsubstantiated. So there you go. There's an example. Emphasis is placed on current trends and fads. So, you know, the whole birther movement, uh, the fads for that. When you think about that, either or bifurc or it's also called bifurcation. So it means that when you, someone argues that there's only two options, that you can either do this or that, that something the way the way you present something that there's only two options. Whenever someone does that, your red flag should go up. You should wonder, what do you mean there's only two options? Because if you know in life, just look at nature. There's many options. So if someone's arguing that there's only two options, mm, that's a red flag right there. Ad hominem, attacking the person, not attacking the argument. Politics happens all the time. Attacking the character of the person, not attacking what their policy is or their, uh, their, their, um, their career or their choices over time, right? What they've shown as in their job, right? Not attacking that. That's what you should be focusing on, not the person's characteristics, whether they had an affair. Because the truth is, someone having an affair does not equal, and this is what people do, does not necessarily equal that they're going to be dishonest in their job. Being dishonest in your marriage does not equal being dishonest in your job. I might get a pushback on this, but it is absolutely true. I just don't think, it doesn't mean that. You... When you're dishonest in a relationship doesn't mean you're dishonest in the rest of your life. Being dishonest in a relationship can just have to do with you and that person. It could be, it's more complicated than that. So think about, but the thing is we do that. We also, we draw those conclusions, inductive reasoning. Red herring. So an argument that relies on irrelevant premises for its conclusion. So it's the whole point of that is when you make a, usually an accusation or you're making an assertion and then your facts don't add up, right? Or they're irrelevant and you're trying to just distract the person from what you said in the first place. You start focusing on these irrelevancies. Relevant means nothing. It doesn't have anything to do with your original, original proposition. Hasty generalization. Coming to a conclusion before you have all the information. Oftentimes, it means you conclude you have, you've experienced one incident and you decide all people are like that or all situations are like that. You have one bad, one bad English teacher, you decide all English teachers suck. Um, you have one bad experience um, at a, uh, a hamburger joint and you decide hamburgers suck. Okay. Or, or how about this? You have one bad hamburger to, at, a, at this joint and you've heard about the good hamburgers. You had one bad hamburger and then you think every time you go there, it's going to be a bad hamburger. Hasty generalization. Slippery slope. Faulty assumption that one case will lead to a series of events or actions. You're going to see this. You're going to see this argument in the video. I'm going to have you do an analysis on Sarah Palin's argument, um, her speech to the NRA. You're going to see that. We hear that all the time, actually. And, and she makes that argument about the Second Amendment. We've heard it over and over again. If the Second Amendment in any way is altered in any way, that's going to lead to X, Y, and Z. 
If you alter anything, then it's going to take away all our freedoms, right? That is a slippery slope argument. And if you look at, I wanted to say this, if you look at politics at all, it never works that way, really. For them to like pass just one little thing and they make a little adjustment to something, it ne- doesn't usually end up being like a slippery slope or domino effect. That's not really the way it works in law. Okay, appeal to traditions. An argument suggesting audience members should agree with a claim solely because it has always been done this way. Your parents, right? You know, we don't do this. We're Portuguese and we don't do this. We're Irish and we don't do this. We're Chinese and we've always done it that way. So this is the way it has to be done, right? That's an appeal to tradition. It doesn't mean it's true. It doesn't mean it's right. But that's where the fallacy is. So what if it's always been done that way? And so you could have a tradition that, that no longer is a good tradition, right? Okay, we are almost done. Straw man argument occurs when attempting to refute another person's argument, you address only the weaker distortion version of it. So you're focusing on pieces of the argument that are already incorrect and you're not really addressing the real issue. The purpose is to misrepresent your opponent in order to feel superior to them. So you do that, you per- specifically pick, think about when you've had an argument with your a significant other, right? I know I do it. I'll find the weak points in her argument and I'll point them out instead of addressing what the, what the complaint is or what the real issue is. So I can feel superior. I'm not saying that this is a good thing, but I'm just admitting. All right, here we are at the end. Happy days. We're at the end of this. So this is your work to work on the fallacies. You'll watch this and do the speech analysis on, um, uh, uh, former governor Palin's I think she's a former governor and I don't even know, but I'm pretty sure is former gov- governor of Alaska. Uh, um, and I just will say this, that I enjoy Sarah Palin. Um, this is not a way to put her down, but the speech is full of fallacies. You'll see for yourself. Uh, but I find her very entertaining. I'm entertained by that speech. And it's actually in this way as a speech, it's a fun, entertaining speech. So I hope you're entertained and enjoy it. And that's it for me today. And I will be seeing y'all until next time. Have a good one and take care of yourself. Bye.